Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Code Blue, dedicated to all things unidentified, brought to you by bluebook.tv, the platform of the unexplained. Please check it out. It's free. I am Thor, and thank you for listening. The topic of this episode, the Preliminary Assessment Report on Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, June 25, 2021. This much-hyped and greatly anticipated report from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence did arrive on time, and it greatly disappointed as well. But of course it did. At only seven pages in length, with two appendix pages, the seven-page report was prepared by the recently formed Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, the UAPTF. During this episode, we will attempt to highlight the findings, quote the main statements, and draw some conclusions, because, while for many this report was a huge letdown, there are a number of elements worth noting as well, that keep hope alive that we the people and the government agencies involved will eventually find ourselves on the same page and same side of the topic of the unexplained. For your own research, there's a link to the report below. But first, let's consider the naming. Preliminary Assessment, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. It immediately acknowledges much more work is to be done. This is preliminary, and that is something. It further recognizes and highlights, as key conclusions of the report, the need to organize official research into UAP, to develop, quote, relevant processes, policies, technologies, and training for the U.S. military and the IUS government personnel if and when they encounter UAP, so as to enhance the intelligence community's ability to understand the threat, end quote. This acknowledges the need for an organized approach to analyzing the phenomena. With focus on reports and data between 2004 and 2021, the report acknowledges the UAP phenomena represents the presence of objects given the multitude of sensors agreeing to their physical reality. But the executive summary also emphasizes the limited amount of high quality reporting, hampering ability to draw affirmative conclusions. To code blue this is A, wrong, Overwhelming volume of data does exist, and B, drawing a conclusion is a bit of an oxymoron, since the unidentified signifies the absence of affirmative conclusions, so calling the unidentified inconclusive is a double negative. The only conclusive result of studying a UAP would be to come to a definitive conclusion that the Tic Tac is, let's say, an unmanned military technology reconnaissance drone from an orbiting mothership originating in some distant galaxy. That would be conclusive. If it were conclusive, it wouldn't be unidentified anymore. It would be identified. But there are acceptable stages where we identify it as a technology not belonging to man that would be the middle ground. That would be conclusive yet unidentified. We're ways away from a full understanding, but one day we will know, but it's not going to happen as a revelation in a seven-page preliminary report plus a two-page appendix, prepared in a hurry over a six-month window, nor will it happen through a mass government disclosure. 
too many conflicting interests are at play. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence, with the release of the unclassified seven-page report, is just obliging the Senate's demand, that's all. But let's stay on subject, the report. The biggest disappointment is the report's attempt to explain away conclusively what the UAPs are likely to be, according to the writers, despite simultaneously recognizing not enough data exists to draw such conclusions. This is unscientific and anti-analytical, to say the least. This part of the report falls along long-held traditions since the mid-50s to explain UFOs away as anything other than what it appears to be, for national security reasons, because anything else would be admitting we're not in control of our airspaces and we're not able to discern potential threats all around us or identify the adversary. The report sticks its neck out in this regard by saying, quote, we currently lack data to indicate any UAP are part of a foreign collection program or indicative of a major technological advancement by a potential adversary, end quote. In this context, technological advancement by a potential adversary can be, of course, alien spacecraft. The five likely yet inconclusive explanations offered in the report are airborne clutter, birds, balloons, flying debris, natural atmospheric phenomena, such as ice crystals, moisture and thermal fluctuations that are messing with the radar systems, US geological or industry development programs. In other words, secret military program related to activity objects. Foreign adversary systems. Technology developed by the Chinese, the Russians, North Koreans maybe. And the fifth category is the catch-all other that in the report comes without much of a definition at all. But it is real, the report goes on to say. The phenomena is real. Yes, you heard that right. It does admit to the phenomena, no matter the roots, being real due to the consistent multiple sensor systems and eyewitness involved, and further, that it causes danger to civil and military flight operations at the least, and at worst, it represents a national security threat. The report concludes with its assessment that, quote, Limited data and inconsistency in reporting are the key challenges to evaluating UAP, end quote. The report goes on to say that 18 reported multi-sensor incidents between 2004 and 2021 near military operations areas on land, in air, and at sea exhibited significant patterns of behavior, including flight characteristics such as acceleration, the absence of propulsion systems, as well as apparently consistent physical description by multiple eyewitness accounts, in addition to radar sensors signatures. The UAP task force also recognizes some backdrop facts worth noting, making the gathering of data, including eyewitness accounts, difficult, that, quote, socio-cultural stigmas and sensor limitations remain an obstacle to collecting data on UAP. And then goes on to say, quote, although the effects of these stigmas have lessened as senior members of the scientific policy military intelligence communities engage on the topic seriously in public, reputational risk may keep many observers silent, complicating scientific pursuit of the topic. End quote. Very true. Let's be clear. This report only touches the surface of the UAP phenomenon. The limited number of official reports that have by and large been made public already. We collectively know that UFO footage, crop circles, and other eyewitness data is gathered daily and far outnumbers 144 reports and 18 incidents, events in a span of the 15 years. 
There's no mention of Roswell, Area 51, or any other incidents, encounters, programs, technology, hardware, data, on this planet or elsewhere whatsoever, for a very simple reason. They're not part of the unclassified section of the National Intelligence reporting. They remain classified, top secret, and they continue to be secretly funded through non-line listed parts of the National Defense Budget that late Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld stated days before 9-11, 2001, that $2.1 trillion in defense spending were unaccounted for. So the research continues, led by civic heroes and organizations, undeterred by disappointments of continuing non-disclosure. They will happen in time. In the meantime, let's continue the collective work of painstaking research and analysis and publication of evidence in service of truth. You can watch or listen to this and other podcasts of the Code Blue series on Project Blue Book and BlueBook.tv. Please check it out. It is free. This has been a Code Blue for all things unexplained and unidentified. Please subscribe. And each day, let's show some compassion and care. I am Thor, and thanks for listening. See you next time.